Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of JDM Masters and today we are at Tome Powered behind me here and the name Tome I just want to talk a little bit about the name Tome comes from the Tome Expressway which is situated just right outside this headquarters uh, it is the central trunk road that runs from Tokyo all the way down to Osaka now taken from the name it's called Tome Powered we are gonna go and go inside and check out the history and the inside the workshop of one of Japan's oldest and probably best most well-known JDM tuning company let's go so this modern lookish building was established in 1994 uh, it's located in Machida clean floors very clean windows everything is just immaculate um, just like the quality of uh, the finish of their product so let's go inside Konnichiwa. 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 Hi. I'm, I'm, thank you for inviting me, Sakurai-san. Uh, no problem. It's yeah, welcome. it's a pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, Tomei is very well known and respected by um, JDM tuning fans around the world. Mm -hmm. And so it's a real pleasure to be here uh, to take a look at your facility. Oh, okay. Yes, I will show you the, the inside of the factory later. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Can't wait. Uh, so there's just uh, some display of mm -hmm. items here. Uh, can we have a look at them? Oh, sure, of course. Right. We're just here now at the little display uh, inside their office. And you can see here um, some of their parts. Tomei is really well known uh, recently for specializing in titanium um, exhaust and intake parts. Now the workmanship um, of these titanium parts is just at a completely different level from many other smaller manufacturers, which we'll take a look at some of their technology processes in a moment. Looking over here, um, you can see all the trophies they've won. We've got different categories uh, from classic cars to time attack, uh, circuit, drag, Z, Z master. And these trophies just really show their power rests and um, high tuning ability uh, in, in the world of motorsports. Now over here, this is a fully balanced uh, crankshaft from a 2JZ Toyota inline-six engine. I just want to draw your attention to this very, very beautiful and lightweight um, titanium intake pipe. This is for the CZ4A Lancer Evolution 10. And this is a new product that just came out. And over here, we have uh, something that is also um, often overlooked at, but essentially important in tuning. This is an oversized oil pan for the SR20 uh, Nissan four-cylinder engine. Now when it comes to turbo cars, you can do a lot of the engine tuning, but still, in order to get a high and reliable horsepower, you need to change the turbocharger. And there's a lot of selection out there um, from many different manufacturers around the world. Tome actually has a wide range of their own specification and own design uh, turbochargers called the ARMS. And we have here uh, a lot of these on display from small high response turbos to uh, larger ones with larger ARs and um, suited for a lot of classic JDM engines uh, ranging from the 4G63, 4B11, RB26, 1JZ, 2JZ and also uh, for the EJ20 and the, uh, the VR38. A lot of them here this is for RB26 and I like this one for the 4G63 and this you'll see on uh, the legendary Genesis engines with the blue valve head cover which we're going to check out later on. Titanium, no, full titanium on the RB26 front pipe. Front pipe? You can see how the fuel, the light, like the Wow, it's, it's super light. I can hold it with one hand. Yes. I don't think I can hold a stock one with one hand. So just a feature about this uh, fully titanium Tomei uh, front downpipe for the RB26. As you can see, the profile is really low and uh, e it's equal length um, exhaust uh, downpipe which is intricately uh, joined at the curves. And so um, it gives uh, not only low weight, but you can have it um, put on a car that's been lowered without any problems and with full performance. And just check out this bit here, um, the collectors. Um, you know, welding titanium is really, really difficult because uh, you have to be careful of the high heat and, and also um, the joints, but they've somehow managed to make this uh, just an automotive work of art. And we're going to see how later. Arigatou gozaimasu. About 25. Hi, 25. Not many people. It's a small company. It's specializing in engine tuning and also engine overhaul. Overhaul as well. and then tuning to 
そうですね R&D デベ,デベロップ R&D デベロップパーツセールス So Tommy sells off the shelf parts but does Tommy accept orders for custom builds? Sometimes I see Yes I see. So like a special order what the camshaft or what the stroker kit you want on the inside Right yeah. Right But Tommy does not do complete cars? No really this no. Right We only right. have like a race car drift car and a race car that we see you later Right so, right right So if a customer overseas wants a Tommy engine how can they uh, get one? Uh, usually what we do is uh, please contact the, our dealer that uh, our overseas. I see, I see. So if they if they want to overhaul their engine at Tomei Japan, they can have it sent to Japan through their dealers? Usually, yes. Right. What are the biggest markets now for Tomei? We will say like Australia. Really? Yeah, Australia? Yes, still the strongest, right, especially right. for GTI market. So the RB26, RB25, yeah. STI. Toyota. STI. Right, 4G63 and EG20. And now we're going to go check out the engine building and tuning facility, which is located um, on the first floor of the building. And we can get, maybe we'll get lucky and get to see some of their demo cars as well. So hidden right behind the building here, let's see what there is in store. Ah, there's a couple of Lancer Evolution 10s. I see a red GTR. It looks very familiar. I wonder whose car this is. Does it have a Tomei exhaust? Not yet. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just the coloring of this. R35 GTR, which is Tomei's um, demo car, I believe. And over here, as you can see a sticker, it says 50th anniversary. Now the company actually started in 1968. Uh, a gentleman called uh, Suzuki Seichi, he was a racing driver and he started off with motorcycles and then later on uh, started to uh, develop parts uh, with his brother. And they were one of the first Japanese engine constructors for the racing industry and later um, going into tuning. Now, uh, in the 70s and the early and the early 80s, um, it was the birth of the Japanese tuning industry, which is closely related to uh, to racing. And Tomei started out with the name Tobe Motors, and because their racing power rest was very highly regarded, they were invited to be like a semi-works team by Nissan themselves. And one of the first cars that they raced was a Nissan Sunny B110, uh, which had a four-cylinder 1.4 or 1.5 liter uh, turbo FR. But that was their key first car. And later on, um, throughout the, the late 80s, uh, many cars like the Supra and, and the RV series came out and it started to be very popular into the 90s. That it expanded um, engine building and still supplying to the race industry, but also for the tuning industry uh, with many other different cars that uh, it's well loved today. So the R35 demo car is equipped with their TI Racing Titanium Muffler, which is a catback system with a diameter of 100 millimeters. And it fits into the, uh, the stock holes and it's a four tailpipe. And we're just gonna start the car and check out the sound. Obviously, this is a racing spec exhaust and it will not, it's, it's not actually really street legal, but it's designed for track use and it can support up to a thousand horsepower. The point of this exhaust is that it's a bolt-on straight system and it supports a wide range of a variety of tuning. But also Tomei says that it's a little bit softer than typical straight through type uh, titanium pipes. And it, I think just listening to it uh, really accentuates the natural sound of the VR38 DTT engine. It seems that this livery, this yellow color, um, is paying homage to the original Nissan Sunny race car, the B1111, which um, Sakurai-san is, is kindly showing us right now. Oh my goodness, sakurai is this the legendary car? Uh, it's it's yes. the, it is the actual race car? Uh, the actual replica. It's a replica? Yes. Wow. So this Nissan Sunny KB110 uh, was introduced by Nissan in 1970, but this is a race car uh, version that Tomei first raced. Now the stock car is was equipped with a 1.2 liter engine, which uh, in, in Nissan race cars, 
had about 145 horsepower, but I was told by Sakurai-san that this uh, car was stroked up to 1.3 and produced 170 horsepower at 10,000 RPM. Uh, it's just phenomenal. I mean, some, some cars, more, modern days cars, struggle to reach that. And so here we have uh, a Mark II Formula Drift demo car owned by the company. And um, like a lot of drift cars using the uh, JZX chassis, um, it typically has a 1JZ or a 2JZ, but this is not your ordinary 2JZ engine. This is perhaps one of the biggest stroked 2JZ up to 3.6 litre, as what the number implies, uh, developing 850 horsepower, um, obviously thanks to this huge snail-like truck-sized Garat Turbo. You want to see this one as well, maybe? It's a GT40. It's a replica. Oh, I see. I see. The chassis dynamo for measuring um, horsepower, which is a very important part for um, determining and, and, and tuning cars uh, for high horsepower applications. And just looking at this Ford GT replica, I mean, it's a classic American V8. And uh, Tommy also. Uh, take services to repair and maintain and overhaul the engines of, of specialty race cars uh, which private owners have and so this GT40 replica is undergoing some um, overhaul right now mm. and some of oh, these just for setting this just right? for, for settings proper setting for thing. proper settings which is obviously very hard for a carburetor it's a small company size they're very very you know focused and dedicated into refining those those small little things and on these on the walls here these are soundproofing right Yes. Yeah. But maybe uh, no, after nine o'clock, uh, because we care about the neighbors. Yes. We shut. We finish. So inside this door is the secret passage into like an Area 51 kind of like um, laboratory where they do engine tuning. I'm just gonna have a look. Already it kind of feels like I'm, I'm in some sort of secret research facility, but um, that's exactly what it feels like. That's exactly what it is. Wow! If you're a real car enthusiast and you love um, your petrol running through your veins and oil um, circulating in your brain, I mean, just standing here around these legendary JDM engines um, in full tune form is just something that's once in a chance lifetime. And I'm absolutely honored and quite honestly flabbergasted every time to come here. I've seen these in tuning magazines way back in the 90s, uh, the Genesis engine catalog uh, for the 4G63 right here. So a Lancer Evolution 4 to 9, um, four cylinder, two liter, they also have a stroker kit up to 2.2 and 2.3 liters attached with these arms turbocharger. This can develop in excess of 500 to 600 horsepower. Over here we have, I believe is an EJ20, EJ25, stroked up to 2.6 liters. Um, it's really actually rare to find reliable tuning for uh, Subaru EJ engines and Tomi um, has done a lot of extensive research into um, various parts like the crankshaft, the pistons, and homing of the block, um, the suitable turbocharger on, on, in the flow, which they do in the engine test bedroom. It is a rare chance to have a close look at the boxer engine of a Subaru, or any boxer engine. You'll notice here, and they cut out how the timing belt is like a serpentine. It's really, really long, and it goes from one end to the other. Um, the engine itself is flat, but it also needs a lot of ground clearance for the exhaust manifolds around it. And this is one of the most difficult parts of um, tuning uh, and making an exhaust for a boxer engine. These bends have to be of equal length, which is really, really hard compared to uh, an upright or V6 engine. And the runners are really long, so that exhaust flow uh, going to the turbocharger, uh, that's, that's, that's something that um, still they manage to really like make like a work of art. And next to me is this of course, what everyone knows really well, it's an RB26 inline six engine, 2.6 liters, uh, found in the Skyline R32 to R34. Wow, so uh, the chief engineer just explained to me uh, that this is the latest development of the RB26, which has uh, a newly designed um, manifold coupled with 
a modified uh, Tomei turbine, which interestingly uses uh, the internals of the ball bearing of an IHI turbo for its um, high response and also better performance. So they've kind of combined that. But interestingly, this is the newest developed part. Uh, the downpipe, uh, which formerly had a couple of uh, little indents here in order to fit into the, uh, the really tight uh, Skyline GTR bay, but they've remodeled that in for its better flow uh, to support higher horsepower and response. And this is a new product that it will be releasing very soon. Uh, that meticulousness to uh, small attention to detail with developing each part. Um, in a way, it really is like how car manufacturers um, go to the lengths in developing engines. But don't forget, this is like a very small company. And that's just remarkable. So, 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 twin turbo is single to single, equal flow is not going to be a good thing. So, we have to be able to do it. So, another very important part and often overlooked by um, people who want to tune their engines is the engine oil pan. Now, this is uh, the three oil pans I have in front of me. This is from the 80 Supra 2JZ, which has the oil pan somewhere in the center. This is from the 1JZ from the um, 100 Chaser and Mark II. And this is from the um, 161 Aristo. Now, these three oil pans are already really quite big. But what Tomei and also a lot of, a lot of other manufacturers have done is they create special baffle plates. But Tomei's one is a little bit more special. Let's have a look. Now, oil pans, from the factory do not have what is called baffle plates and these are really really important because as you can see here there's the oil collector um, so this is upside down the oil pan sits on the bottom side of the engine and you have all the oil circulating around here uh, in this little tub now can you imagine if you're in a drift car and you're going sideways constantly each and every corner and there's like a couple of g's uh, just making all that oil stick to the side of this. What happens is you get oil starvation and oil starvation is really the last thing you want. An engine needs oil in order to keep the cooling and to circulate. If it runs out of oil, your engine just goes, it blows up, it goes kaput. So oil baffle plates are designed and this is basically a box which keeps all the oil in the center. And I told me I've even gone as far as to create these rubber valves so it prevents all the oil from escaping. It's a one-way valve and prevents all the oil from escaping um, outside this little box. It's a bolt-on unit, which uh, suits for these three types of Toyota J-Series engines. So I have here the, the chief engineer of Tome Powered. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My name is Tomita. Tomita. Yeah. Tomita-san. It's such a pleasure for, to, to have you here. Um, I really, really like all the details um, that's put into Tomei engines. Uh, hiding behind a nice lady, we have... Oh my goodness! So this is an, uh, an engine uh, bench test facility. Something you'll find in car manufacturers when, when they develop engines. So uh, a test bed is when you attach the engine um, to a huge dynamometer and um, it has the coolant and oil running all over to um, extract the horsepower out and also to do a lot of testing for small little parts. And for such a small company like Tomei to have this sort of facility, which I've had for years, um, it's just shows a dedication to uh, developing the, from the finest tuned engines uh, in the JDM world. Now attached to the engine is also the transmission with the propeller shaft. And this gives a very, very realistic uh, power flow um, like it would in a real car and then this coupled with the actual the dynamometer which we saw early on the rolling road uh, you can get a really realistic um, power flow and to check that each part of that rev range uh, in, in detail and, and, and fine-tune. We're gonna have a demonstration of the engine test bed. Let's have a look.
on my left here is a FA20 engine from the GT86 and the um, BRZ. Um, as you can see, it's quite different from the EJ20. Um, the cams and um, a lot of couple of other things, but nothing like one of their classic SR20s, which I've found hiding under the table. When, why have you got a SR20 hiding under the table? <laughs> wow. An SR20 NA engine with individual throttle bodies, originally made by Tomei. Wow. And um, used in the S13, S14, 220 horsepower, uh, peak horsepower. Oh, this is a FD2 K20A. We're already developing 220 over horsepower, so let's see how much more power they can get from this. There's another secret passage, and this is where um, engines and engine parts are washed. And a very important part of, of engine overhaul and building is actually uh, the pre preparation, which involves cleaning. So, you know, um, using things like the brush and this spray to uh, carefully clean each one, because you want it to be free from contamination, grease, um, when you put all those little parts in. Small little things like this that make um, a lot of the difference in smoothness and horsepower and reliability. An EJ block undergoing the honing process. As we can see, the uh, technician here is just carefully um, setting the engine block um, on, on the die, tightening it. Special equipment used to test the surface uh, flatness. As you can see, the, mic and the meter there with the gauge um, goes around the surface of the engine block. You want to keep that important compression in the engine block in the combustion chamber and so measuring the flatness uh, to make sure that the block is usable and ready for tuning is one of the most the next most important process. I just want to point out that a lot of these machinery here um, is, looks really really old. Uh, it's probably been used for about as long as the company's been set up but you know um, there's some things that never change. You know, engine technology, electronic technology of cars, our new parts get developed but um, the important process of, of engine preparation, parts preparation, measurement uh, is, has always been the same for um, decades and decades and these machines have been here and doing the same work and also you know the machines itself have to be maintained in top condition in order to um, make sure that the processes on the engine um, is always kept as accurate as possible. So there's really no big secrets but just attention to detail. Now besides the engine block itself, the next most important part um, to develop reliable horsepower for an engine is within the cylinder head. And one of the most important components are camshafts. Camshafts can really change the way an engine feels and behaves. And so here is a measurement of the roundness of the camshaft. So what the technician is doing now is actually um, making sure to, to correct the straightness of the camshaft. Now after the camshaft has been um, cut out with the shapes, uh, due to the manufacturing process, the camshaft itself is actually very, very slightly bent. And this process is actually to make it straight again. So he's using a micrometer to measure uh, the, round, the, the, the roundness of the, of the camshaft uh, lobes in each part and the, uh, the press, which is made of aluminum, which is softer than the steel, steel camshaft. And he just intricately, bit by bit, rotates it and to make sure that it becomes straight, uh, a true straight shape again. So he's gonna give a little demonstration of how the camshafts are manufactured. Um, obviously, for demonstration, um, he's just going to show basically how it's done. In real manufacturing, the cover has to be closed for grinding. In actual manufacturing, that grinder actually shaves off uh, bits of, of the camshaft. Okay. This is a new machine, which they've just got. It looks much more modern than that one with the color screen. So the newer machine has a much smaller diameter grinder for more accuracy. More to go, no katachi ga dekiru. The camshaft, the recent low carb camshaft, is 350 pounds. Right, right, right. 
So the explanation is that uh, using a more newer machine with a smaller diameter 100 millimeter grinder can actually grind out the inside of the of, of the rocker arms and modern engines which is a lot more um, severe on the on the on the angle compared to the older machine which is a huge 350 diameter one so obviously one of the advantages of using newer um, production machinery this is a windows powered uh, machine it can contain the information of all of the different engines that tome uh, manufactures you can see 4g 4ag um, SR and also it's not only just by engine but also by uh, the actual model in which it's um, it's manufactured you've got VQ a lot of this so it just saves a lot of time um, compared to the old machine where you, you have to put in uh, programs from an external pers personal computer um, serial port into it all this just contains everything that's needed for manufacture guys this is something that you will not be able to see anywhere on YouTube to manufacture camshafts for tune engines. We're not, we're talking about tune engines, not mass production factory engines, you know. This, these are the kind of facilities that um, usually auto, only automakers have. Guys, if any of you are buying one of these Tomei camshafts, you can rest assured of the high quality of build and um, accuracy through being made with this machine. So we have the finished product. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but the side profile of this cam is not actually flat. It's a little bit indented, slightly, slightly indented. A 100mm diameter grinder really can increase the accuracy of this shape. Thank you. Moving on to the next department, we have here the cylinder head building room. And Sakurai-san is here with us again, and we have... Oh, Sakurai-san. This is the engine assembly room, right. aluminium oil pan, oversized oil pan for the uh, A12. A12 Sunny. From next year, uh, these will be sold and this is for classic car restoration and, and, and tuning as well. I really love the workmanship and finish of, of these aluminium oil pans. It's, it's quite, it's very light but huge capacity and this is the... Right, same baffle plate with the one-way rubber valves uh, that will be installed inside. Intake and exhaust valves over here. We have a crankshaft. Uh, we have various cylinder heads. Um, this, the, the cylinder head of this inline six engine, um, is very, very unique. It's very old in design, uh, simply because it. There is a very special car in the Tomei powered workshop, and if you guys remember to watch the Nissan Heritage Museum video, this is the Prince R three eighty race car. Um, itself a very rare machine. The engine is being restored right here and you can see here the Prince cylinder head written right here. Oh my goodness, this, this is such a rare opportunity and um, it's just mind-blowing to see. And under this plastic cover is a four-cylinder engine from the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 9 4G63. Um, this is midway through the process of being transformed into a 2.2 liter um, Genesis here um, and it's and even the engine um, block uh, number it says with Tomei inscribed with Tomei 4G 63 just beautiful is there a secret in in building engines uh, always our engineer was keep saying that there's no so special secret just right. to follow the, the manual proper manual to build, There's nothing so special. And that's very interesting because um, following the manual is actually very difficult. Difficult. Sometimes, yes, it's difficult. Sometimes it's very difficult. And the metal clearance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. That's a myth in, uh, in engine tuning. Well, if you have a tuned engine, it doesn't have a long life. But Tomei engines are a bit different. If, if, you have, if you maintain them well, they can still have a long engine life. Depend on the horsepower, how the customer makes it. You know, sometimes the customer uses for like a drug racing or time attack for the, our Genesis. Then when we prepare, recommend to overhaul maybe one year or uh, once the one the race finish. Right, on right. The street use um, as long as the proper the oil maintenance. It's done. Yeah. It's, it runs with like a same as a stock motor. That's amazing. This is a Hollinger gearbox 
from uh, Skyline GTR 32, 33, and 34. Just to have ah, so you got So Tomei also um, is the agent for Hollinger gearboxes uh, for Japan. Okay, guys. So we're in the last section of our tour of the um, the Tomei facility, and these pipes that I hold in my hand are titanium, extremely, extremely light. And this work table behind me um, is where they actually manufacture um, all of the titanium pipes for exhaust manifolds, um, mid pipes, and and mufflers and everything. As you can see, just various lengths and pieces of, you know, one of the most exotic materials. Um, used for the automotive industry and titanium is really difficult to weld the high temperatures needed like a curved section together to form this one curved pipe which in mass production um, it's it's just crazy to maintain that consistency absolutely fantastic more machines here and here we have a complete an almost complete set for the, the mufflers and more different parts. Now this is what the joints look like before it's, it's sealed it together, something like that. So, you know, after it's manufactured and welded to the shape, it's cut and two parts are then welded again to join together to make something that looks like this. So this is the car, uh, Nomura Ken's drift car. Okay. And then the, the, we, we, the car is here because we are going to the overhaul the engine. Oh. Car. Next year, D1 series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he loves using the ER34 four door, right? Yes. But? But inside is a, uh, I don't know, depends. Sometimes people say <laughs> it's a 2J. Eh? It's a 2J Toyota uh, engine. <laughs> same the 2J 3.6 door. My goodness. Toyota engine in a Skyline. Uh, because now the 2J is uh, high potential and good, better strength. Anyway, thank you sakurai for inviting me. Oh no, thank you very much. This uh, we hope more that the viewer uh, understand the Tomei technology mm -hmm. and then uh, hope they enjoyed the video. Yes, yeah. click right here, Tomei-84 on Instagram, updated by uh, sakurai -san. You can also check their website here uh, to check their products. And um, we'll be coming back here soon if they're new products. And um, it's been a really great review. Thank you guys. Peace out. Your one will be like curious after this. My car is an eco car. <laughs> what is this? This is so good! Oh.